we got some hardware to talk about. This is, it's that time of year. It just doesn't, it doesn't stop. It's October. We got some new hardware. We've got the OnePlus Open. Open. Not my favorite name. Terrible. But, but it's a folding phone. And it's a it's OnePlus's first folding phone. Debatable, if you can call it that, because Oppo, their sister company, has about Many folding four folding phones. phones so. Yeah. But, but it's the it's the first OnePlus folding phone, and I did the review of it. It's out already. I think it's a really good folding phone, and we'll get to also Meta smart glasses as well, and maybe the Quest Three a little bit. But calling it OnePlus Open infers that all of their other OnePlus devices were like yep. really hard to fix, or that they're closed. Well, they are. Right. Well, are closed. they closed? Yeah. I, mean, I would argue they're open, and I would argue this is closed. Why are they open? Because oh you can see the screen God. and it's there. You open He's it. right. It's open for business. That's what it is. Am I right or is David right? No, no, you're right. You're goddamn right. I'm <laughs> <laughs> that is closed. <laughs> this is closed. That's closed. I know. One plus closed. Yeah, but now. Wait, open, open it? it up. Yeah, but. One plus open. open. I think it's not a terrible name. Um, it's, wait. It's you just know what is terrible? One plus, is your screen your broken pixels. already? Yep. yep. No way. Yeah. No way, baby. Yeah. yeah. Huawei. So let's just give you the the high level overview. So it's it's OnePlus's first folding phone. It is a relatively normal size outside screen. It's a six point three inch, ten eighty p ish LTPO outside screen, with a but LTPO two LTPO f- on the outside two on the outside down, down to ten hertz. hertz. Yeah, two thousand eight hundred nits max brightness. It's the Ooh. new brightest screen I've ever seen in a phone, and it's awesome. I love these bright screens we're getting. That took like two weeks. Yeah, right. That was yeah, because the Pixel Eight in my pocket was the previous champ for brightest screen I've ever seen in a well, phone. But I love that. Find X6 Pro is a hundred nits brighter than Pixel. Sorry, fair. Okay. <laughs> fact check. Top three. Good fact check. Top three. But uh, it's got the alert slider. It's got this huge camera bump on the back. They've been doing all these like reveal the like teaser videos and giving people exclusives of like looking at the phone, and they all have to like blur the camera bump as if that's the design of the phone we've seen the phone before but i've been using it for like three weeks now we've seen it the inside screen 7.8 inch uh squarish aspect ratio almost no crease at all i mean you can see it here looking head Um, on almost no yeah really really good inside screen 120 hertz ltpo 3.0 also 2800 nits little corner cut out for the selfie camera um Really, really good looking screen if yeah. you ignore the dead pixels. Speaking of the hinge and not really being able to see the crease, um, our friend Michael Fisher, friend of the show, Mr. Mobile, <laughs> did a very good video where he went to Oppo's headquarters in China and did that. a whole breakdown of the hinge. Um, yeah. They reduced the parts down to 69 parts from like 100 and nice. something. Nice. There it high. is. Yep. And um, yeah, you should watch that video. It's a very good video. Yeah. Just saying, looking at this phone, happy birthday, Marquez is dead. Yeah. Wow. It's my dad's birthday. I hope I messed something up. Nice. Happy birthday, Mr. Brownlee. Sorry, interrupted that one. But just like calendar big things, dad's birthday right on there. That's today as we record this. But uh, it's $1,700. Yeah. It is their most expensive phone ever. Honestly, my initial take is like, okay, wow, this is a really good first gen foldable First if you can call foldable. it that, <laughs> because this is basically the same as the Oppo Find N3, it's which is Oppo's same phone. fourth foldable. Yeah, I don't know. Like they've that. done flips. They've done folds. Yeah. Um, but it, f- it kind of fits right in between the Samsung candy bar shape and the Pixel Fold Passport shape. Yeah. It's like right in between those. Yeah. And I really like it. I like the flat sides. I like the, the alert slider. I like the flat or uh, the power button being the fingerprint reader. Yeah. A lot of good things about this phone. Yeah. That being said, as you noticed, Andrew, um, yeah. there is a little tiny bug-sized dot on the bottom of my screen that appeared a couple days ago. It hasn't grown yet, but it probably eventually will, considering it wasn't there. That's <laughs> basically that's more than just like a dead pixel. That's like multiple pixels. It looks like there's a small fly. I on thought my I tried screen. to take like swipe it away because I thought right. it was like a piece of food. That's or what something. I at first did when it first showed up. That's really bad. Um, It's right around the hinge. Uh, And, you know, I reviewed this phone. I talk about what's good and what's bad about it. The cameras are solid. It's got this huge, huge uh, camera circle on the back. Um, Is it reminiscent of a black hole? Lumptuous, uh, like a black hole or I, whatever they call that? uh, Yeah, I guess. (laughs) Is that what they say? They said it was like... 
irresistible, just like a black oh, hole, I th- which wow. I found very funny. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. It's a Hasselblad camera. It's got a 3X telephoto. It's got an ultra wide. It is a decent set of cameras, I would say. Um, nothing like remarkable or game changing, but I generally found I really liked using the phone. And my conclusion was like, all right, this is a really good phone. But if I just end it there, that doesn't mean people should buy the phone. It turns out a phone can be really good and still not something that most people should buy because number one price 1700 bucks for a phone number two yeah. durability questionable you know not everyone's going to break every folding phone they own but that it's still no matter how many millions of tests you do with the hinge and we saw everything they try to do with mr mobile's video you still have yeah. moving parts like there's still yeah. some risk there and then number three <clears throat> I found it surprisingly hard to convince regular people that a folding phone is something they should even care about. Yeah. Power users, we love folding phones. I see a lot of flips out in the wild, but I've only seen like three folds ever. I've seen a single digit number of folding phones in my life out in the wild. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Interestingly, if if you buy this phone on OnePlus.com, you can send in literally any phone in any condition, and they will give you a two hundred dollar credit towards it. Um, Fisher asked in the briefing if I set my Nexus Four on fire <laughs> and send it to you in a box, will you still give me the two hundred dollar credit? And they said yes. They actually said yes. Yes. So we were like speculating on on this. We were like, hmm. did they actually only need to charge like fifteen hundred for this phone, but they were trying to make it look more premium? Because in my opinion, getting folding phones just as cheap as possible, like lowering the price as much as possible of folding phones is a, is more important to sell more folding phones than making it f- seem premium. Yeah, it's kind of a psychology thing. When you see a price tag of $1,700, you kind of just assume a bunch of things about it. But that's also in the price category where I'm like, I would never pay that much for a phone ever. Right. You know? I would also like... I see what you're talking about. I do think getting it lower is super important, but I think someone who would pay 1500 would also pay 1700 So, like, I wonder if that's making a huge difference between that price range, where if you could get it down to, man, even 1200 is insane for a phone, but there are plenty of non-folding phones plenty. out there that are $1,200, and they're not even top of the, lot, the, like, best spec all the time. So That's the thing. I wonder if 15 to 17 is, like, if you've just gotten ready to do that. Or maybe they just want to harvest the lithium out of the phones that you send in. Well, if it's on fire, I don't know if well, you're... <laughs> they're not requesting that you send it on fire. Yeah. But they would still take it. It's, it's there's a couple of good points you guys bring up. Number one is this one has to live in a lineup, so it has to have a price that's alongside all the rest of the phones that this company makes. So in a sense, the lowest you can charge is whatever your most expensive phone is. So if you have, if you're OnePlus and you have a $900 phone, like... You obviously can't go below 900 for this. Why does that have to be true, though? Well, that brings me to the other point, okay. which is if I combine all of the parts of this phone, it, it does feel like it's at least a $900 phone. Yeah. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, the yeah. 16 gigs of RAM, the half a terabyte of UFS 4.0 storage. Yeah, this is at least a $1,000 phone. The really, really good 6.3-inch outside LTPO screen at 2,800 nits. Like yeah. the performance, the battery, the 67 watt fast charging, all this stuff. No, By the way, no wireless charging. It doesn't have wireless charging. It's such a OnePlus thing. Yeah. But like if I just put together all that stuff and this 7.8 inch inside screen. Premium leather back. <laughs> I'm kidding. Fake Sarcasm. Leather, it's awful. Leather. Horrible fake leather. <laughs> it feels like it's at least a $900 phone. I'll agree with that. I mean, okay. And yeah. the engineering has to go into the R&D and the hinge and all that stuff. Remember when people used to compare phones strictly based on specs and they'd be like, oh, but it doesn't have as high of a spec of this as this one. This phone does have all the highest specs. 16 gigs of RAM, 2800 nit display. Like, that's at least a $1,000 phone. Yeah. You know? So I guess when you first said that, I was like, why does a folding phone have to? Because, like, there are pros and cons of a folding phone versus a normal phone. So, like, if we were getting to that point where folding phones were the similar prices to just flagships, that would be a great thing. Because then you're just making the choice on do I want folding or do I not want folding? And not right. having to be like, oh, I want folding, but I don't want to spend 500 more dollars on yeah. it. So yeah. So, my theory was folding phones are going to be finally allowed to hit mainstream when they are literally just a regular phone that happens to fold. 
which means they have to also be as thin as a regular phone when they're folded up. They have to be the same price as a regular phone. There's a lot that goes into getting them down so to price. So that's happening with the flips because the flips had, Samsung finally hit $1,000 with the flip mm -hmm. with flagship specs, I yeah. mean, around flagship specs. And now the Razer 40, um, the non-Ultra is a $600 phone. It just launched for 600 bucks. It's a yeah. flip. Yeah. So like, that's like, that's like yeah. mid-range phone pricing territory, you mm -hmm. know? And mm -hmm. it's a flipping phone. And also, like, there's, like, a Techno Phantom Flip or something that's also around $600, but... Yeah. So it seems like the flips are getting down <clears throat> They're getting range way cheaper. much more. These yeah. haven't gone down at all. The first yeah. Galaxy Fold launched at 1800 They're all still $1,800. Exactly. Yeah, Isn't that, that is, weird? That is wild. The first one was, like, we get it. This is a total <laughs> test. Let's yeah. see what happens. And it broke. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah. Now we're on the fifth one, right? Yeah. And it's still... How it's is that still not going down? That's, I agree. Yeah. I remember reviewing the first one. I was like, guys, I know it's a thick <laughs> phone. I know it's got crazy bezels, but it folds in half. Like, Can we appreciate that this thing folds in half? All the engineering and risk that it went into making this crazy thing. Mm -hmm. And then Gen 2, we were like, all right, it's a little more refined now. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Good. I can see the improvements. The direction is positive. And then Gen 3, you were like, all right. Ultra thin glass. All right. It's even more refined. And then Gen 4 was like, I think it... I think it's different. And then Gen 5, it's like, I literally hold it up to the it's next exactly to the old one. I'm like, I think the, key, like, the flash move. We made it slightly flatter. Like the, the, the hinge is a little bit thinner and like they're really refining little by little on that. Yeah. And it, the, the price is just rock solid. Yeah. At it's like the four and the five of the Samsung series are almost exactly the yeah. same. The three yeah. they did do a bunch because the three was the like under display uh, selfie camera. Selfie camera yeah. And like, which yeah. that felt like where they added all the way <laughs> at all. Still garbage. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it is what it is. It seems like the folds are all kind of hovering. The Pixel Fold is also 1800 Like, they're yeah. all kind of in this area where... Also, is it even... That's the thing. It's like inflation. <laughs> is, it even, <laughs> is it even possible for a folding phone to get down to the price of a regular phone? Because if it ever does, that means all the components of a regular phone, which there are less of, are now cheaper. Like, if I have a high-end folding phone, which has two screens, uh -huh. a split battery, and a hinge, if that gets to 900 bucks then that means a high-end phone is less than 900 bucks because it has one screen, one battery, and no hinge. Yeah, but the technology is advancing and potentially getting cheaper to manufacture. Like, if they if they created a new technology, as the years go by, that type of technology might get cheaper over the years, right? Yeah, I just think the best you can do is reduce the difference in price. It will never be the same or less Yeah, because it's two screens. Yeah. And two batteries yeah but the okay but you could say like the z flip 5 which has two screens right because mm -hmm. it's got the screen on the front and the interior screen sure those are getting cheaper they're getting cheaper but if you if you tasked samsung with their same supply chain to make a phone without two screens with the same specs it would cost less right if you put the same yeah almost flagship cameras that they put in that phone if you put the same size battery and it's just a regular slab phone that would be an s23 fe right yeah so it costs less I would say, comparing this to a Z Fold 5, I would buy this over a Z Fold 5 any day because I like the form factor better. It's got better specs in general. It's got the alert yeah. slider. It's got better software, in my opinion. It's got that cool little black dot on the screen. It's got that, on the inside. Dead, that dead pixel on the inside. That's that? really dope. Um, it's not the smallest I mean, issue with the screen. I think this seen. feels great. I think it looks awesome. The specs obviously are cool. The but if I'm charging seeing, is a bummer, though. It is a bummer. But if I'm seeing this, this early on yeah. that's a huge red flag yeah the thing yeah. is though it's not on i haven't gotten it yet and it, this is reminiscent of when the pixel fold came out and ram amadeo's pixel fold broke yeah. on like day two that's the thing about but these. nobody else's seemed to remember i had the pixel fold here after like a week on the beach in chicago and, and i had fine. no problems and yeah. then i've had this for like two and a half three weeks and babied it and i cannot believe anything has gotten under that's... the screen like i haven't been in any weird conditions do you think something's under the screen do you Believe think that's entropy. what happened i think some i mean it's dead pixels so something had to. i mean this hinge there. though looks from all the hinges that I've seen, this looks one looks great. the hardest to get something on the inside yeah. of. Also, let's do a little ASMR snap. Oh, yeah, right. Oh. Nice Ooh. clamshell. Wow. How many more pixels did I break doing that? <laughs> I've th I just think it's weird <laughs> <Magic>. that... <laughs> Yeah, so it's it looks so much better than the first gen foldables. Like yeah. this is yeah. a hinge that you don't think anything can get in. It has IPX4 water resistance. Oh. If you showed this to me like five years ago, I'd be like, "Oh my yeah. god, <laughs> this is yeah. incredible!" So they've come a long way. Yeah, but 
with any of these weird like screen issues, like you said, it's kind of just bad luck. Like, yeah. it's Dude, just if I spent eighteen hundred dollars and that happened, I'd be in three pretty weeks, mad. I would be furious. I think the question would be, how will and OnePlus you- support? these phones like can you get a screen replacement do you is there a warranty that will cover just the random screen breaks near the hinge that are going to happen to some people they Hopefully. ask you to set this one on fire and ship it to them and then <laughs> get, 200 yeah, bucks, get 200, 200, bucks, 200 off. bucks off the next one yeah it yeah. is what it is but it's out there watch the video i think it covers a lot a lot of the thoughts we have a lot of the thoughts about other folding phones i think i'd say the same as you i would take this over the samsung any day yeah but I would take the Pixel Fold. Which is funny. That's a conversation I was thinking about. I was like, the Pixel Fold is technically worse in every way, um, but I like the form factor better, and the UI is just so enjoyable that I would, I would take, take the Pixel Fold over this. I would also. Yeah. 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 By a hair. But the I take them both is, over The Samsung. screen is way worse on the Pixel Fold, but I would still take it. I even talked about that Honor Magic 2. Yeah. I would take that hardware over Samsung's. Mm. So it's all out there. Can't wait for Pixel Fold 5. The evolving world. Oh, we're getting the. You mean Z Fold 5? No. Pixel Fold 5. Yes. Oh, in like five years. Yeah. Four years. Yeah. Four years. Yeah. I'm also excited for that. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, thanks for watching this clip. I just want you to know that we are beta testing a new engagement feature. You know how on Twitter, if you use a certain hashtag, the like button does a certain animation? We're testing one where we're going to try to get our like button to have a certain special animation and our subscribe button to have a special animation. They should also, at some point, start glowing when I say the words like and subscribe. And then you get a special award for hitting them. Let Is me know if they work. Like, subscribe, 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 like, subscribe. Would you like subscribe? Would you like to subscribe? Would you subscribe to like isn't there also something where you comment and it spins around in a circle? It's supposed to rotate. Rotate. The comments rotate. The comment rotates. <laughs> Thanks for commenting. I was really hoping it would do that. <laughs> like on the Z axis. It's rotating now. <laughs>